Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about perfumes that were love at first sniff for me. I do have a lot of these in my collection, but I wanted to feature this bunch today. These kind of perfumes are so exciting. Like, it is such a fun feeling experiencing a, like a brand new perfume for the first time and you're just like yes that is a bit of me I love it and it's something you really connect with such a joy so first one I wanted to talk about um I'm just downright obsessed with this I think this is gonna be in my collection forever I simply don't ever want to be without it this is Rirana Tonka nutmeg. I just adore this because it is really an Anna perfume through and through because it has gourmand elements. It's powdery. It also has earthy qualities. It's got spice. It's cozy. It's sexy. It's, it's so many things that I love. It's fresh, earthy, a bit green, and then you get spices from, I mean, obviously nutmeg, and there's also pepper. There's a prominent orris root, which is contributing to that earthy presence, but also really giving it this luxurious, creamy, powdery texture, and that amplifies the longer this sits on your skin. And also, as this dries down, the sweetness kicks up a bit, but it never goes too sweet and it never goes too gourmand. There's just like elements of that. This is perfectly unisex. I find this so ridiculously sexy and addictive, but it's not sexy in an intimidating way because you have sexy that can be very like bold and like pow, pow here I am. But this is also just very comforting and inviting because of this powdery nature and this bit of sweetness that gives it this coziness. So then as it dries down, the tonka bean and the vanilla come up more. And it's not listed, but I could completely imagine a kulfi note being in here as well. Like I'm getting that kind of background. So just an essence of this kind of like creamy, nutty dessert a little bit. I get about eight hours from this and projection is just a little bit above moderate, I would say. Then we have Juliet Has a Gun, Sunny Side Up. I find this to be such an underrated perfume. I love when I find a really good your skin but better scent. Like that's one of my favorite categories. Your skin but better scent and there's just something like really addictive about it. This contains so many notes that I adore. There's a prominent musky presence. It has ISOE Super giving it this kind of fresh woody quality as well as of course the sandalwood that's in here. Very creamy, cozy profile. Coconut milk is certainly attributing to that overall creamy presence as well and makes it a perfect your skin but better scent for the spring and summer. It has such a fun happy vibe to it. Powderiness from the orris root and then a really nice vanilla that never goes too sweet. You smell clean, you smell fresh, you've got this kind of summery coconut woody musk with a subtle lovely sweetness. Very underrated I think and no it doesn't smell like eggs. Thank goodness. And I get about six hours with an intimate to moderate projection. The next one I'm so excited to have, I got this one for Christmas. This is Joram Studio Spirit Cask. Just this little bottle. This is the biggest size they carry, 30 ml, but it is an extra de parfum concentration and it certainly performs as such. So even though it's a small bottle, like you don't need a lot. This is fantastic. A completely original, unique, boozy, woody vanilla. Truly a standout in that category. If you like those kind of scents, it's one you have to try because trust me, it's, it's something special. I can't compare it to anything and this is perfectly unisex. This is such an interesting wearing experience because this, it's not listed, but I 100% get something minty in here. Like, you know that feeling after you've just been like 
chewing gum and then you go for like some cold water and you just get this icy feeling that's what I get in here but simultaneously there's also a real warmth because of the vanilla and all the booze there's rum cognac and whiskey there's a ton of wood in the base cedar guyac and oak labdanum contributing to the warmth and giving this uh ambery feel it's so interesting having a fragrance like pull you in these different directions where it's warm and cool at the same time. I will say I do get that kind of minty quality specifically in the opening and as this dries down it heads into that warm category and then those sweeter notes kind of pick up never going too sweet. It's so intriguing, incredibly attractive. Like I think this for a date or honestly just wear it whenever <laughs> in the fall and winter, it's very sexy to me. And although you have like a whole bunch of booziness and wood, it's like the smoothest interpretation of these notes. And I love this addition of pear, how that mixes in with everything. Truly fantastic. And it lasts all day on me. I don't need to use a lot and it projects. You know that trending audio? She was a fairy. <laughs> That's Celeste by Giardini di Toscana. This is like one of those perfumes, if you love smelling whimsical and girly and just like you are dancing on sugar-coated clouds of violet and raspberry and vanilla, this is your perfume. And then there's also Ambroxan, which just makes it like even more attractive and helps with the overall longevity of this fragrance. So this kind of like musky, presence with a candied powdery very modern violet that does not smell mature whatsoever and i love the raspberry note in here because often raspberry comes off artificial to me it's just fluffy perfectly sweet and then you have this creamy vanilla sugar that comes across kind of like a fluffy vanilla frosting i've talked about this one at length in fact all three of my Giardini di Toscana fragrances were <laughs> love at first sniff for me. It's so delicate, dainty, super girly. I just think of like tutus and prancing in wildflower fields and fairies. And I get about eight hours moderate projection. Valentino Uomo Intense. This is marketed towards men. I wear it and I love it. Actually, my favorite way to wear this is paired with a powdery vanilla. Specifically for me, that's Ode to Italy Morn to Dusk. The way that that particular vanilla is done pairs perfectly with this kind of profile. I think this is so sexy. And one of the best designer perfumes, it's just a winner. It is one of those, in, like if you love Iris, I think this is just like a must have in your collection. This uses a dark, deep, iris that lends a bit of this lipsticky quality but for guys it's not too lipsticky it doesn't go like too far into that direction because you have this added depth from a really smooth leather it's insanely attractive nothing about it is animalic you've got some sage and then you have some sweetness coming in from tonka bean and vanilla so there's just wonderful juxtaposition be between like this overall confident attractive man but then also this you know sexy kind of lipsticky accord i really hope they never discontinue this i have tried a bunch from the uomo line this is my favorite i've tried a bunch of fragrances marketed towards men that are compared to this kind of profile it's still my favorite. It smells like subtly sweet lipstick stains on a man's leather jacket. And this lasts all day for me with a stronger projection. Violet Shot by Olfactive Studio. I was instantly mesmerized upon smelling this. This is a truly unique niche perfume. And that's always very exciting for me to discover scent profiles that are wildly creative and different. I have so much appreciation for that. This lists the note of violet leaf. So you get this fresh earthy green presence. And although it's not listed, I also get violet 
flower petals, that timeless powdery floral presence. And I will note there is a grass note listed. That is not too prominent. It joins really nicely with the violet leaf contributing to this fresh dew covered green experience, but it's not overly green. It doesn't literally smell like grass, but it's giving you this sitting in the garden kind of feel. And there's just dew drops covering the whole area. And then we have a saffron in here giving it this airy, exotic sweetness. That's not too sweet. There's also some vanilla in there, not too sweet, but that's all really enticing. Not only is the saffron giving it that airiness, but I also get this smooth leather-like feel. So I feel like this leather casing does a nice job of also depicting the scent. So to me, it smells like a very elegant woman, like writing in her leather bound journal in her garden on like a fresh dew covered morning. Give it a sample first because it is quite unique, but I love it. And I feel like I'm gonna have this bottle forever. It's huge and an X straight to parfum concentration. You really don't need a lot. It lasts all day for me with a moderate projection. Lamar by Kajal is a fun one in my collection. I think up until the point that I had first smelled this perfume, I hadn't smelled so many like pineapple bomb fragrances and certainly nothing that wowed me or was like as unique or special as this. This uses an insanely juicy, like overripe pineapple. Like pineapple, it has not gone bad. Mm -mm, I would not enjoy that. It's at the point where it's like, okay guys, we gotta eat this because we don't want it to go bad. That's how juicy and like dark of a pineapple this is. And then it's got this added tartness from red berries, a crisp green apple. There are florals in here. Some people get a really prominent rose from this fragrance. I personally don't. I mean, I can pick it up, but the florals to me appear more supporting, but give it a sample first. The rose is really well blended in my opinion with these fruity notes. And then you have just a bit of woodiness in the base to ground it. For me, it's like those fruity notes that I get the most. And then like this warm ambery presence with vanilla. But yeah, I think if you haven't really been introduced to pineapple in fragrances, or if you haven't been impressed with a pineapple perfume yet, this is one to try because I remember smelling this for the first time and I was just like, wow, like I wanna, I wanna drink this. And this lasts all day for me with a strong projection. Another garden like perfume, but incredibly different to Violet Shot, like no similarity whatsoever. This is Parfum de Marly Meliora. This is one of my most elegant, fresh, clean, floral fruity perfumes because usually fruity florals i think come across more just girly fun and have more of like a youthful presence but this is absolutely timeless if you're looking for a fresh clean perfume but you don't want something that smells like straight up soapy or something like that this is a good one this uses the most crisp dew covered florals it's rose which i picture this being like a white rose and there's also lily of the valley and although this is floral it's not like boom in your face too floral i think it's balanced nicely with this natural fruity sweetness black currant red berries and then you also have cassis contributing to this fresh green character it also has a very clean musky quality beautiful like i picture a woman in all white who's just, you know, gone through her everything shower and now she's meandering through her garden first thing in the morning. Picking some berries, perhaps. And I get about five hours moderate projection. Next up, Maison de Lazy Bali High. This smells like your quintessential summer scent where you have this sun product kind of smell in there, but it's not too much because I am sensitive to perfumes that smell too much like sunscreen or tanning product, something like that. You do get that vibe in here, but it is the smoothest, like richest <laughs> interpretation that I have smelled of that profile. It's creamy, coconut, jasmine, ylang ylang. It's so tropical, like tropical, floral, warm, creamy balm and vanilla 
and then like a sensual inviting musk. Ignore the other notes. They literally do not exist. I don't smell an ounce truly of rose, tobacco, patchouli, any of that. I really don't. It's truly a warm sunshine experience. You're, you're out in the Bahamas, in Bali, you name it, tropical destination. White sand beaches, clear waters, having the time of your life, um, and you are just a radiating gold bronze goddess and your skin is like perfectly moisturized with this heavenly summery body oil. Like that's the image that comes to mind. I'm telling you, if you love coconut, ylang ylang, vanilla, you're more than likely gonna enjoy this. And the performance is amazing. I get all day wear strong projection. And then the last one I'll feature for today, Maisa L'Amour Eternal. One of my favorite mango fragrances in my collection, the other one being God of Fire, which was also a love at first sniff for me. This is such a fun, exotic blend of apricot, nectarine, mango, peach, a whole blend of these bright, juicy, orange, tropical fruits. This is amazing for spring and summer. It's got a big dose of musk and ambroxan, which helps it last and also gives like a unique character and spin to like all of these fruity notes. And then it's got a little bit of caramel and vanilla, giving it a really addictive sweetness. This has similarities to Zerjoff's Herba Pura, but I love this so much more. That prominent mango really makes it stand out and the musk is far more palatable and is not so like screechy and obnoxious as it is in Herba Pura. This is like what I wanted. Herba Pura to be for me. And I get about seven hours with a moderate projection. So that wraps up one list, uh, at least, of <laughs> perfumes that were love at first sniff for me. I would love to know what fragrances were love at first sniff for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you're having a great day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.